Well, it makes a good bun. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of questions. What strain is it? You know, what's the flavor going to be and so forth? Lincoln Fish is taking us on a tour inside the building where he grows cannabis in East San Diego County. High pressure sodium lights give this room its yellow color. This would be called a very frosty uh, nug here with all those little white things or trichomes. It looks kind of like snow. Um, that's going to have, this one's going to have a lot of flavor and a lot of oil out of it. Fish is CEO of Outco Labs, which grows hundreds of cannabis plants at a time. The buds in this room are almost ready to harvest. We're going to cut them down by the, down by the base here. Um, and then we're going to take this out and we're actually going to hang it upside down. It's, the drying process is very important to get the dry right, to get the water activity level right, and so forth. Outco isn't your typical cannabis business. It grows, manufactures, and sells cannabis products at its own dispensaries. Outco also wholesales cannabis to retailers across Southern California. We sell to 60 dispensaries plus. We'll be in over 200 by the end of the year. Outco has its own line of products, including concentrates and vapes, items that Fish says are growing in demand. You aren't getting a lot of new smokers. As you get new entrance to the market, they typically go to concentrates. They go to vapes or other concentrated products or they go to edibles. That's that's the direction that they're going to go. You're not going to create... People who didn't smoke before aren't suddenly going to take up smoking because cannabis became legal, you know, and we're seeing that. We're seeing the flower as a percentage of the total sales, we're seeing that drop. So what you're going to see is a lot of plants that are grown to maximize how they might come out in an extraction, for example. Growing cannabis indoors allows for a higher quality product, but it's expensive. You're basically creating a natural environment in a highly controlled way. There's lighting, air circulation, filtering, water, pest, and labor considerations. Fish believes as more growers come in, the cannabis growing process will change. But I really believe that the days of the indoor grow, except for very specific niche kind of stuff, I think they're kind of numbered. I think we're going to see a lot of price compression to grow indoors, and you'll hear different numbers from different people, but let's call it between five and $600 a pound is your cost to grow. To grow in a uh, sophisticated light deprivation, light supplementation greenhouse where you're using the power of the sun is more like $250 a pound, right? Um, I think that's the future of the industry. Greenhouses are how Mike Milano plans to grow cannabis. Where we will have hard walls, clear roof, uh, light deprivation, so we'll be able to black out the light completely. Milano's family owns and operates a farm in the city of Oceanside. Milano Enterprises grows things like flowers and filler plants, just like this Israeli Ruskis here. Two years ago, the company CEO, he left his position to pursue growing cannabis. I just saw it as an opportunity that I don't think we'll see again. It's just a brand new industry, and it intrigued me. It interested me. There's way more gross margin in cannabis than there is in cut flowers. Milano has been in the agriculture business for most of his life and says cannabis is just another crop. I have a, a background of running large-scale ag operations, right? Cultivation of cannabis is just an ag operation, right? The fact that we're growing the taboo plant of cannabis is irrelevant. You just have, it's, it's environmental controls, pest control, pest management, process management, labor management, all the same things that make you successful in a business like this make you successful in cannabis. It's taken two years, but Milano just received a permit from the city of Oceanside to start growing cannabis. It's been a challenge to, to work through the political process of all this. Now he faces a state licensing process. Milano says it's a huge investment to start a cannabis growing operation. I think it's really difficult for a smaller uh, group that just wants to jump in now or just an individual is like, hey, I want to grow cannabis. I'm like, okay, well, do you have seven or eight million laying around to get it done? or do you have a year or two to do the political process? It's when you start asking the questions around what it actually takes, uh, good luck. Gotta keep the air circulating. The, the air circulating helps really keep the plants healthy. Outco's Fish agrees. He says the cannabis industry isn't the cash cow it's made out to be. It's far more difficult to make money in cannabis than most people realize. And ultimately, it's going to be just like any other business in terms of, in terms of you have to you, know, you have to do things efficiently. You have to watch your margins. You have to, you know, create a, a real business infrastructure. Then there's the whole issue of competing with the black market. Every legal operator will, will tell you that um, they aren't doing nearly as well as they could because of the black market. Illegal grows aren't under any regulation and are avoiding taxes that legal operators face. I'm happy to pay those taxes. I'm, I'm all for it. But it's got to be, it's got to coincide with making it more difficult for the other guy. The problem with that whole black market piece is 
they're using stuff all over the place. They're making products that they don't care about things like how much lead is in a vape cartridge or, you know, what what uh, pesticides went in with it. They just don't care. Fish says he hasn't seen a lot of enforcement from the state on cannabis. Just recently, California found it received lower tax revenue than originally projected. Fish says to see that revenue grow, illegal operators need to be shut down. Matt Hoffman, KPBS News.